Good morning from California. So <clears throat> I'm going to get right to it. I met Rajan in 1994. I hadn't even read his book or anything yet. I just saw it. And I was immediately drawn to his work. I was already a homeopath for quite a few years at that point. And um, I wrote him a letter on that little piece of postscript we used to use to communicate. I said, can I come? And he said, yes. So I got on the plane and went to India and didn't even know what he looked like. He picked me up at the uh, hotel, singing away. <laughs> And I got in his little car and we drove to his office and I sat with him for a month and it changed my life. Changed my life. Absolutely. I, um, we're going to present a case today. And this case came to both of us at the same time. Amazingly, all the cases we've watched. We were asked to choose uh, and present in 10 minutes our favorite Rajan case. So we're going <laughs> to... Put on your seatbelts because we're going to talk fast. <laughs> okay, so it's a wonderful case of kafea. And this case helped us understand many things. Uh, first of all, it uh, after, helped us to understand the remedy kafea very deeply. Secondly, it helped us to see and to interpret the patient and put it in terms of the repertory and the material medica. But mostly what this case did for me is it illustrates how the central delusion, how vital and important it is to understand the central delusion and to realize that the central delusion controls a person's life. In this case, the central delusion was cured at the very deepest level after this man had suffered all his life until his 60s, suffered deeply. And this, uh, this is the most important thing that can happen in a person's life. It changes them completely and heals at the deepest level. So we, we've learned this from our master, Rajan Sankaran, and we can never thank him enough because not only have we been able to heal so many people, but we've been able to heal ourselves to some extent. <laughs> okay, thank you. This case, and probably most of you know this case, um, is a man in his 60s, a businessman, uh, with severe depression and what he calls anxiety, but which is actually kind of a terror, and uh, severe sleeplessness that came after a series of professional failures and financial loss. And his, his story goes like this. When he was 10 years old, his father died of, I think it was cancer. And uh, his father was a very loved man within his small village. Um, his father was a giving and caring person, helped many people in the village and was therefore loved by all and respected by all, including you know, the very important village doctor. And uh, yet when the cancer came and his father was no longer able to contribute, the village doctor, well, everybody seemed to turn away from, seemed to the patient, to everyone uh, turned away from his family. And uh, at age 10, he ran to the doctor asking for medicine when his father was really in trouble. And the doctor threw him out of the office. And uh, he, he went home bereft. And uh, what, he, what he learned from this was that when you're no longer useful to people, they have no use for you. And uh, they won't love you, they won't care for you, they won't, help, they won't help you in your life. Well, fast forward many years, he becomes an extremely successful person within a very large business. Um, and uh, he, was, he was a highly creative and forward thinker he was able to spot trends before anybody else could. And his mind was very facile, quick. He could uh, see possibilities that other people couldn't see. And he was always uh, working to improve the company with all of his might. 
Not only that, he was helping many of the individual people in the company forward by contributing to their careers through giving them ideas and helping them in their thinking process. And, uh, and the people you know, cared for him. He was highly esteemed. He was very successful at the company. But then his ideas went a little bit further than people wanted to accept. And right at the height of his career, people seemed to stop listening to him. And they seemed to turn their backs on him. And on top of that, he was being pressured to help cover up a serious embezzlement by the people at the top of the company who were stealing from the company. And uh, against his better judgment, um, and largely to help the people below who he was afraid would be um, damaged if he didn't do this, he agreed to do it and he covered up the embezzlement and finally just quit the company and tried to work on his own. There were further setbacks. And finally, he was reduced to living with his son and his daughter-in-law in their home. And, uh, and even worse, one day it came that he was not able to make his tax payments, which was terrible for him. And uh, his son wanted to help him with financially and uh, he refused. And finally the son, and the man didn't know what to do. It was a very extreme point in his life. And finally the son told his wife, told the, son's, the son told his own wife to take the money and put it in the cupboard, the man's cupboard, um, our patient's cupboard that would cover the taxes and uh, to let him know that the money was there. And uh, so she did. And when the man understood what had been done, he said he was shattered, utterly shattered. And uh, this was you know, a huge turning point in his life. And it was very difficult as you're watching the case, Rajan had this all on video, as you're watching the case, it was very under, difficult to understand why he was shattered. Was he shattered because he was humiliated? Was he shattered because uh, um, the son didn't come to him himself? What was he shattered about? Um, then there were a couple of very important dreams that came up. Uh, in the first dream, he, he wakes up in the utter darkness and uh, there are people, filthy people, filthy scene, excrement everywhere um, and uh, total darkness in between these visions of this filth. And then uh, and his main feeling in the dream was of being closed in and uh, wanting to get out of this with all of his might. In the second dream, which was just the opposite, he was hearing this beautiful music and actually singing to the beautiful music in his dream and actually was singing aloud and was waking up the house to his embarrassment. And as he was singing, each note that he sang created tremendous growth in beautiful plants and uh, the plants were spreading and growing with each note that he sang forward. And the feeling was openness and freedom versus the constriction and closeness that he felt in the, in the dream of filth. And so that, that was more or less the case. That, that was the heart of the case. And uh, Rajan uh, uh, spent a lot of time with the analysis. The most important part of the analysis was to understand this feeling of being shattered at that moment. What was causing that feeling of being shattered? And the way that Rajan was able to put it in perspective and which the man confirmed later in a follow-up was that the sensitivity with which his son and his daughter-in-law treated him at that moment, not only giving him the help that he needed, but the, um, the way that they tried to protect his pride and his feelings at the same time gave him a feeling uh, so such a great feeling of appreciation, gratitude, and thankfulness that he could not, he almost couldn't bear 
the level of gratefulness because on the other side, he had believed his whole life, he had believed if you're no longer useful, nobody will do anything for you. They won't give you the time of day. They won't even give you medicine for your suffering father. And so uh, the, the way he interpreted that was ailments from excessive joy, ailments from excessive joy. The joy, the, the extreme joy of being cared for was more than what he could bear. And this is, this is the way that Rajan put it together. And then adding to that, you know, his extreme sleeplessness during the depression, which came from constant thoughts and the desire to do good deeds, to perform good deeds. Those three rubrics led to the prescription of coffee. And uh, for, for more details on this, you can read the entire case in uh, System of Homeopathy. It's case number 17. And uh, I think you'll see. So the, these two very formative experiences as a child, weeping outside the doctor's office because the doctor wouldn't even help his father. And second, the tremendous feeling of gratitude, which he could not bear. These are the two poles of the case. And uh, then an extraordinary thing happened in the follow-up. In the follow-up, <clears throat> the delusion was revealed. He remembered that he left the doctor's office sobbing as he went outside. The doctor who had rejected him told him to go home. But what he, had, doctor, what he hadn't remembered was the next part. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. So then uh, <clears throat> what happened is that the doctor had actually come out to the steps where he was sitting and comforted him. He put his arm around him and he said, son, you have to understand your father is dying. There's nothing more we can do for him now. The most, the nicest, the most gentle thing you can do for your father is to just let him go. Let him go, not keep trying to give him medicines and, and make him eke out one more breath. He's suffering so much. The patient realized that this man had been kind to him all, so many years ago, he'd been kind to him. He'd been comforting him instead of uh, telling him to go away, which was a delusion that he was unworthy, shouldn't do that, go away. So he realized way back that this, this was when he took on this delusion and this is when, and now he's left it and it was gone. He completed, his father died in peace and then this man, was joyous, has truly joyous for the rest of his life because he, he lost his central illusion. And that, yeah, that was, that was our really most favorite case of Rajan's of all oh, time. There's one other point <clears throat> that the man at the end said, yeah. um, I realized I saw this huge boiling this dream. cauldron of black, brown viscous fluid boiling away. And I realized that I had to swim through that. And if I could swim through that, I would be cured. I would come to freedom. I would come to freedom. And of course, the black boiling brown cauldron was coffee. So he swam through it and he was free. Such a great case. That's incredible. Thank you so much. And also that mammoth task of sort of fitting it into your 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Really, really Love to okay. everybody yes. who practices homeopathy. Yes. Okay.